So my first question is about exercise. I know there's a lot of, I guess, professionals and exercise gurus that, you know, will talk about exercise for people that want to perform or want to showcase their muscles, but for the lay person that just wants to be healthy and, uh, and maybe we need to split it up for man versus our male versus female, but is there a type of exercise you would recommend for just longevity you know, I don't want to get really bulky, but I'm starting to lift more weights for, to preserve my muscle mass, but I don't want to get really big. So, I mean, what would you recommend for someone like me or just a lay person for health rather than getting super buff? Yeah, cool. So a fairly general question. I understand the necessity for questions to be quite general in a format like this. As a professional exercise physiologist, first and foremost, with every client, I would always start with a discussion around what is a needs analysis for that client. What do you do in your life? What fitness do you require? What is it that you're doing? Um, And I would always build from there and provide very tailored, very individualized um, I guess, advice for individual clients. In terms of as an answer to your general question, my general bent is always that exercise intervention should be at the high end of the intensity spectrum and the low end of the exposure spectrum. In other words, short, sharp, get it done, get it finished, get out of here, get on with your life. Typically, people who exercise and who take on programmed exercise tend to overdo it in terms of their volume, and they tend to vastly underdo it in terms of their intensity. And as such, they're not really training or getting exercise benefit. What they're doing is undertaking incidental exercise with not any necessary benefit to look forward to long-term from doing it. Um, So in general, more intensity, less volume. And if it's not working, then more intensity and less volume again, not the opposite of that, which is what most people who are exercising will do. They'll go, it's not working. I need to do more of it and it still doesn't work. And so therefore they solve that problem by doing still more of what wasn't working in the first place. So, yep. And would you say it's the same for male or female? Yep. I mean, at the base level, there are obviously some differences. I'm sorry to tell you this. There are some differences between boys and girls, boys and girls. We are different creatures. But largely, what we're talking about here is kinetic chains, various muscles. Um, Sure, the female hip angle is different, typically, Um, you know, that kind of thing. But we're just talking about the mechanics of how a body moves from from the ground up. When you're doing an analysis, intensity comes into all of that, and that's relative. So it sort of automatically adjusts for gender differences in that respect anyway um to all intents and purposes i I would pretty much treat an exercise client as equivalent being a person of that body mass stature body type whatever and i would probably see all of those aspects before i saw that person's gender at all as an issue Um, obviously there absolutely are gender issues that people can develop and can you know uh, affect how someone will respond to the exercise training. Again, though, it comes back to individualized programming and personal attention and all that kind of stuff, Um, probably beyond the scope of a generalized discussion, but there you go. Do you prioritize, um, I guess, strength training versus cardio? Do you you think there's a exercise we need to prioritize? Yes. Yeah, I tend to stick around and and uh, suggest that others stick around the resistance training whether that be weights resistance bands whether that be moving in water whatever the resistance is that you have an added resistance and that you're working against that resistance at a high um, strength intensity um, for a, a, a period of time that depends on what that intensity is there's an inverse relationship uh, but but train yourself to pretty much to exhaustion, um, rest, recover for several days, and repeat as a program of training. Mm. And 
I steer people absolutely away from typically what people will call cardio, long lasting, slow, rhythmic muscle contractions, running, jogging, some people will call that, um, high intensity walking, even rowing, cycling, all those kind of things. That's all incidental exercise and fine, that's for another day. But if you want to call that exercise training at a, at a very low intensity, that you're kidding yourself. Exercise training is an injury to your body imposed by pushing your body close to its current performance limit. Mm. And the fitness that you accrue over time is your body repairing itself from that injury just slightly better and stronger than it was before you injured it by pushing it so hard. If you never push, you never injure. If you never injure, you never train. It's called training plateau. That's what a lot of athletes will experience in their careers. And it's usually what ends their careers as athletes because the drudgery of it at some point becomes too much. Now, hours and hours and hours of slogging doing this completely mindless contraindicated activity actually um i do quite a lot on my channel about this on how it's actually that kind of aerobic stuff is what they call it that kind of cardio is really really bad for your health long term you absolutely should stay away from that stuff get at it resistance bands weights whatever it is get some resistance training into your life it's it's high uh, it doesn't have to be high impact, but it's high intensity. It's it's wear yourself out quickly with stuff that's close to your current strength capacity. It's, yeah, and none of that other stuff. So Sometimes I use an, a machine that's like cardio. And then while I get tired, I just feel better. The endorphins feel like they're releasing. Still mm -hmm. think it's a bad idea. Not ideal. Um, are you talking about like as a warm down or something there, Judy? Or Sometimes I'll just go to the gym and maybe I'll run like a mile or two, or maybe I'll get on the right. elliptical yeah. and just use it for 20 minutes. And, right. and Got you it. know, I just feel good right after. Okay. Yep. So that's <laughs> incidental ex exercise. So half an hour, 45 minutes, two or three times a week of some very sub maximal intensity work of the kind you're talking about there. That's fine in someone's week. Okay. That's not overdoing it in my mind. Okay. Overdoing it is when you train for hours and hours every day of the week with very few rest breaks, if any. Okay. And sometimes the, the illness gets to the points where these people start training twice and three times a day. Um, and then they become professional athletes. <sighs> yeah. Okay. Or not. Okay. Or not. Yep. <laughs> so um, you've got this huge population of sub elite athletes who are never going to be professional athletes who nonetheless are living that sort of training lifestyle, spending that many hours a week plugging away at this thinking, well, the reason that they haven't made it yet is just because they haven't done enough training yet. Mm. No, sorry, people. Yeah. Mm. Yeah. In um, my carnivore care book, I talk about how um, there's studies done where people that are ultra marathoners, and I know there's a carnivore that was an ultra marathoner or he eats carnivore, but in general, the, that type of high intensity, like um, CrossFit training, is just not good for the endocrine system. And even for your immune system, I believe that there's a tendency where if you've run ma marathons, there's a high chance you could get a cold after because your immune system was so overworked during that time. So I can see yeah. what you're saying. And I've always agreed with that. But there are a pool of people that love doing CrossFit and they love that exercise and that constant endorphin hit. So yeah, and you're not gonna you're not gonna change those people's minds because those people are gonna do that. And they're I mean, CrossFitters are like vegans, aren't they? They have to tell you they're a CrossFitter within 30 seconds or they will explode. Um so you know they're excited about it. They think CrossFit is the greatest thing since sliced bread. Um, and they will evangelize the world. Uh, fine, go to uh, that, you know, the people I'm talking to are the people that want to know whether this is a good idea or not. And the answer for you people is no, I'm sorry, it's not. Okay. Fair enough. Yeah.